today we're flying out of Avalon, well, Melbourne to be exact, to Sydney. But if you're wondering why is it Melbourne, keep watching. Avalon Airport is pretty small. It's located in Lara Geelong or Avalon. It's an hour's drive from here to Melbourne Airport or 40 minutes. But if you're traveling during peak hour times, it could take an hour and a half or even two hours. Avalon Airport gives you the option to pre-book parking on their website and if you do pre-book it, it's at least $10 cheaper, which is, you know, okay, but saving $10, what can you do? And you could obviously go up there and just pay for parking as you get to the airport and not pre-book, but you are paying $10 more if you want to save the $10. The technology at Avalon Airport is pretty unique. Uh, you just drive up and it recognises your number plate and it puts the boom gate up and no need to roll down a window and stick your phone up to the scanner and it stays up there and you know it's good for winter <laughs> and Avalon Airport is pretty cute in my opinion there's all these sculptures around the airport and pretty cool and I'll show you a few examples But, um, yeah, no, it's a cute little airport, but, yeah, it's good for cheap flights. For this service, we were saving at least $110 from here. The total from Melbourne Airport would have been $316, but the total from Avalon turned out to be $216. So, it's pretty good savings and flights are always on time. Well, um... Maybe not today. So we'll get into that later. But this review is covering two flights. The flight up to Sydney and the flight back. So that's why it's 45 minutes long. And um, Avalon Airport has a games room. But they removed it. When I flew in January, there was a full like, games there, claw machine. And pretty cool. Today, we're departing from gate number two. And this is where things took a big turn. After a 15 minute wait at the service desk, the friendly airport crew have given us a 12 o'clock flight out of Melbourne and they have given us a free bus and two eight dollar airport vouchers. After the bus ride, we have made it to the Virgin Australia terminal. Why not Jetstar? Anyway, I did not film checking for this part, but let's time travel back to April when I flew Jetstar. Here we are at Melbourne Airport's Terminal 4. Terminal 4 hosts the low-cost carrier terminal. Jetstar, Link, which don't think is a low-cost carrier. Rex is not a low-cost carrier. Tiger is a low-cost carrier that is also gone. And Bonza, sorry, Gonza, they're gone. Uh, they actually disappeared. They actually went bankrupt in voluntary administration three days after filming this check-in video which was the Launceston video, like, in April. So, yeah, pretty interesting. If you did not know that Bonza died, well, fun fact for you. <laughs> yeah, it just starts check-in area. This is their check-in area. They allow you to check in online 40 hours before your flight, or you can check in at the airport two hours prior to departure and closes 45 minutes to departure. To check in, you just select the language you need, Type in your name, and then you select your flight. 
and then you just say that you've got none of the dangerous goods and then it spits out your boarding pass. Pretty easy. You're done within two minutes. Check-in's done. Security's done. We've got three and a half hours till our flight. So let's do some plane spotting to pass some time. This is our aircraft that arrived from Sydney that will be taking us up to Sydney. This is Jetstar's oldest A320 that's still in service, registered as VH VQM or Victor Hotel Victor Quebec Mike. Boarding passes or I won't let them through. I'll wait here though. No worries. Thank you, down on your right hand side. Welcome aboard, Jetstar's oldest A320. This is their old cabin, features 180 seats as supposed 186 and slimline seats. Yeah. This is their chubby seats, I like to call them. <laughs> and this is my seat today for the flight, 20F. Of a great view of the wing. Please ensure you are only placing single items, wheels first, into the overhead lockers, and all of your other smaller personal belongings, including laptop bags, backpacks, handbags, shopping bags, and children's bags, underneath the seat in front of you. However, if you are seated at an emergency exit row or a bulkhead, please these are rows 1, 12, and 13. All of your belongings must be placed into the overhead lockers for takeoff and for landing. If you do have any small items in the overhead lockers that are not seated in rows 1, 12, or 13, we kindly ask that you retrieve them now, place them underneath the seat in front of you to make space for all of our larger items that are yet to still come on board. Your assistance is greatly appreciated and will help us... Now let's have a look at the seat features of the oldest A320. At the top seat pocket, you've got a safety card, a menu, and two air sickness bags, a non fod wheelchair table, they can move back and forth, a just start entertainment sticker, and legroom is okay for this flight, and there is no seat pocket, unfortunately, or a coat hook. Oh, and hello VFX, that's our aircraft taking us back home down to Melbourne. Electronic devices such as laptops must be switched off and stowed away now. 
If you are travelling with young children or infants, we do ask that you take extra care when lowering your armrest. We are just finalising the last of our paperwork, and we'll be on our way as soon as we can. If there's anything myself or a member of the crew can do to help make your journey a bit more comfortable, please don't hesitate. The forward door is now closed once again, confirming to the staff flight JQ512326. Please remain in your allocated seat for the duration of the flight, and if you have any questions, please speak to one of the crew. For a final time, we do ask that all electronic devices are now switched to flight mode. We thank you for respecting each other and your crew to ensure a safe and comfortable flight, and also ask that you report any unacceptable behaviour to a member of your crew. Make sure you're familiar with the brace position best suited to your seat. The onboard safety instruction card in your seat pocket shows pictures of your brace position, along with other important safety information. The A320 has eight emergency exits, which we'll now show you. Two at the front, four over the wing, and two at the back of the cabin. Lights will illuminate, showing you the path to follow to these exits. If we need to leave the aircraft quickly, Taking your personal items with you will slow you down, so please leave everything behind. If a mask like this appears from above you, pull it down firmly to start a supply of oxygen. Quickly put it over your mouth and nose and breathe normally. Keep the mask in place by fitting and tightening the strap and then help others around you. There is a life jacket located in a pouch under your seat. If it is required, remove the life jacket from the pouch, place it over your head, Pass the strap around your back, clip it at the front, and then pull on the loose strap to tighten. Only inflate your life jacket as you leave the aircraft by pulling down on the red tags. You can top up your life jacket by blowing into these mouthpieces. The life jacket also has a whistle and a light to attract attention. There are emergency escape and flotation devices accessible from each exit. By law, you must not tamper with or remove any aircraft equipment unless authorised. You must comply with any instructions from our crew and any signs that you see on board. Smoking is not permitted anytime, anywhere on board the aircraft, including in the bathrooms. It's our pleasure to have you on board with us today, and we hope you have an enjoyable flight. Thanks for listening.
Let's have a look at their menu. Their menu has got a redesign. It's more of an Aboriginal design with more colour, which looks nice in my opinion. The drinks are a bit pricey, everything's a bit pricey on the menu, it's, it's a flight, what do you expect? But they have a lot of options to choose from, a lot of combos and hot meals as well, but mainly the hot meals are for international. But yeah, they have a bit of merch, like plain models, but yeah, just have a look at the menu and give you a little taste of what the menu's like. I'd also like to give a shout out and big thanks to my friend Adrian for supplying me with this video. I'll link his channel below. If you would like to see how their in-flight entertainment system works, go to the timestamp below. I didn't record it on this flight as it didn't work, but it worked on my flight home, so it's screen recorded from there. Before they landed to Sydney, let's include this flight. Check-in was fast and simple. We did get cancelled in the end due to a technical issue with the aircraft. It is frustrating. Yes, it was really frustrating. <laughs> Everyone was so upset around us. Even I was too, especially it was in the last minute. If it was like before we got to the airport, yeah, okay, maybe. But it was just in the last minute. We were all ready to board and then, yeah, it was just a pain in the ass. But we went to the service desk and we got everything sorted within five minutes but the line took at least 15 minutes to get through. The crew were really friendly on this flight to Sydney, we were on time and yeah that's pretty much it. Would I recommend just start on this route? I mean look we did get cancelled in the end and you know, cancellations do happen but it is frustrating. If you don't care so much about like food and drink options on planes, then go Jetstar. Look, they do have options, but you got to pay for it. Like Qantas, you get it for free. Uh, Virgin, you get tea, coffee, and water for free. Uh, Jetstar, you also get cups of water for free. It's as per Australian law, but you do need to purchase food and other drink options like soft drinks and other food. But yeah, look, Jetstar is okay if you want to get from point A to point B for a cheap price. Anyway, enjoy the landing into beautiful Sydney and then we will summarise the flight home. But first, let's land. Please remember to hold on to the handrails and be steady on the stairs. 
Before you head off, double check you have everything with you and be careful opening your overhead lockers just in case your luggage has moved during the flight. Remember to take all face masks or wipes with used or unused off the aircraft. If your phone is within reach, you can switch it on now. Just remember that you are not able to use them as you walk across the tarmac. All other devices need to stay switched off until you're well inside the terminal. Smoking, vaping and the use of e-cigarettes is not permitted on the tarmac or inside terminal buildings. Shortly after you all disembark this aircraft and your crew are going back to Melbourne. We do ask that you please ensure you'll check your seat pockets now for any rubbish or items you may leave behind. If you do have any rubbish items with you, we ask that you please place these on your seats as you disembark the aircraft. As we are still travelling at speed, it is important all passengers, including children and infants, remain seated with seatbelts securely fastened until we have pulled up at the gate and the seatbelt sign above you has been switched off. We'd like to thank you for choosing to travel with us today and we do hope to see you the next time you choose to fly. Thank you and good afternoon.
After a great day in Sydney, it's time to head back. I just got off the 420 bus from Mascot Station and it drops you off right in front of the Qantas terminal. It's good if you find Qantas, but if you're flying any other domestic airlines like Link, Rex, Virgin or Jetstar, you need to head over to T2. Not T2 as in the tea shop, but T2 as in Terminal 2. I know, very funny. You have two options to get to T2 from Qantas Terminal. You can either walk in the freezing cold or the heat if you're in summer, or you can choose to walk through the very warm terminal. You need to head inside, go down the escalators, and then another set of escalators, and then you need to walk through a very long corridor, and then pass the train station entrance, then you go up another set of escalators. That will take you to bag baggage claim. Then you need to turn left, then go up another set of escalators, and then we'll take you to check in. This is past security at Sydney Airport Terminal 2. Terminal 2 offers great food outlets and shops to choose from and many seating areas. And these seating areas offer charging ports to charge your phone which is really convenient. I want to let you in on a little story. Since our 6am flight got cancelled, we had much less time in Sydney than we planned to. So the friendly service desk staff put us on the last flight of the day. Original flight had a very special plane. Well, it's VGF, or also known as the Jaffa Jet or the Flying Carrot. When I saw this plane at the gate of my original flight, I was spewing. I was hoping to get on this plane, but it did come true, but it also didn't. This is our aircraft taking us down to Avalon today. VH VFX. Me and my friends like to call it visual effects. Figure it out why. Thank you. 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 Now this is just our newest cabin. Let's have a look. You have a seat pocket on the top. It contains a safety car, menu, and an air sickness bag. A non-foldable chair table that you can move back and forth. Just our entertainment sticker and something different. A seat pocket. Leg room is okay. And you can also get a coat walker. Jetstar Flight, JQ613, your service through to Avalon. My name's Case, I'm your cover manager for today's flight. On behalf of the whole team, it's our pleasure to have you on board. Today we're under the command of Captain Gab Rogers and the First Officer Simon Rodman. Our flying time over to Avalon this evening, just on an hour and 15 minutes. A friendly reminder that vaping, smoking and the use of e-cigarettes is not permitted at any time throughout the flight. I do ask now that your mobile phones are switched to flight mode. Your handheld devices can be used throughout takeoff. Any other larger devices must now be switched off and stored away. And if you're travelling with young children today, we do ask that you take some extra care when putting the armrest in the down position. Once again, it's our pleasure having you flying with us. Please make yourselves comfortable. We'll be on our way very soon. Cabin crew, please arm doors for departure.
please watch the crew member nearest to you while we demonstrate the safety features of this aircraft. Hello again. We want you to have a... Lights will illuminate, showing you the path to follow to these exits. If we need to leave the aircraft quickly, taking your personal items with you will slow you down. So please leave everything behind. If a mask like this appears from above you, pull it down, remove the life jacket from the pouch, place it over your head, pass the straw red tags. You can top up your life jacket by blowing into these mouthpieces. The life jacket also has a whistle and a light to attract attention. There are emergency escape and flotation devices accessible from each exit and a life raft at the rear of the aircraft. By law, you must not tamper with or remove any aircraft equipment unless authorised. You must comply with any instructions from our crew and any signs that you see on board. Smoking is not permitted anytime, anywhere on board the aircraft, including in the bathrooms. It's our pleasure to have you on board with us today, and we hope you have an enjoyable flight. Thanks for listening. oxygen is required throughout the flight, you must remove your face mask before putting on the oxygen mask that will drop from above you. I will be zooming the main cabin lights for our departure. If you wish to continue reading, you'll find the reading light in the panel above your head. First, you connect to the Wi Fi network and then scan the QR code on the seat in front of you. You do need to pay for this service, like movies, TV shows, kids' movies, and podcasts, but there is a free section that has like little movies you can, like not movies, but like little YouTube videos you can watch. There's a flight map and there's a few games you can choose from. Um, here's all the movie selections and 
yeah, you'd have to pay for it, which is like seven dollars, and it's okay. But if it's for an hour's flight, it's not really worth it. But if you're on like a three-hour flight, then it's probably worth it. Let's try some of these little videos. I'm going to pick the retirement captain one. And just a little side note that the video did actually play, like the full video, but the screen recording didn't actually play the video for some reason, so I don't know what that's about, but the video was playing and I was watching it, but yeah, the screen recording didn't capture it for some reason. With Jetstar, 70 of the happiest years. My father was my inspiration and uh, he, he used to fly privately and he always described it as, a, as another dimension. Yeah, I'll never forget him saying that and he's right. Lauren obviously flies for Jetstar normally in Melbourne but it's arranged to be on the last flight and, and mum's on the flight as well. Today's really big. And this is their flight map. Our flight map was a bit broken on this flight, which was strange. Like, there's normally a little plane icon, but it's a bit broken. But they do need to fix this map system. You know, you need to zoom in a bit more, and yeah, it's not the best.
curve to soft toss. Thank you. Thank you.